morning world. Not such a good morning from my aspect, I'm afraid. I've been having a lot of issues with um, sending scripts from doctors to pharmacies. I've started this new e-pharmacy thing, which my chemist does do. So this morning I was able to go down there, scan some barcodes and get some medication. However, on the second week now I've had issues with getting an important piece of my medication together. So let me explain last week to you. What happened last week is I rang the chemist up on the Friday. Chemist said I didn't have any of this particular medication so they couldn't do my Webster pack. In turn, I went the whole weekend without any antidepressants, um, any pain medication except for one, which is for my bladder spasms. So by the time Monday came around, I was quite, well, I was feeling a lot of withdrawal symptoms, let me say that. Um, the mood's been very low since then. I mean very very low I've had to utilize mental health services for an assessment and I do believe it's because that one weekend I couldn't take any of my medication because all of my medication is dispensed into Webster packs and that's because of my spinal injury I take so many so all weekend I went without any of my pain medication except for one diazepam and that was the one for my bladder spasms however that never worked so all weekend I had to pull my almighty strength together and put every every single thing I'd learnt from the pain clinic into action and a lot of it sort of worked some of it didn't some of it did Deep breathing techniques sort of worked, but there's only so much you can do when you suffer with a great deal of pain. When I say pain, pain threshold zero, meaning no pain at all, 10 meaning the most severe pain you can ever feel. If you're a woman, childbirth, if you're a male and you've had a kidney stone or a gallbladder stone, you've had to pee it on out. That's another example. I don't know what other example for men I could give. Maybe a broken leg, a compound fracture where the bone is coming through the actual skin and you're in that much pain, of course, after your adrenaline. Arm um, stops working. Anyway, so Monday came, rang the chemist asked them whether they'd received this fax from the doctor and they then told me that I, I did have a week's Webster pack supply with a full dosage. So all weekend I'd gone through withdrawing from every single drug I could possibly withdraw from. But Monday morning after a very important um, appointment that I went to, which my daughter takes me to all my appointments, I can't drive because of the pain medication I'm on. Um, I drop into the chemist and they bring out my one week supply with every single medication in it. It took me probably a day to get the pain under control, but Let's say it's been a week and I really haven't, my mood really hasn't changed too much. As a matter of fact, I've, in the past I've had some um, suicidal ideologies, so I've had a few of them this week. The difference is with suicidal ideolo ideologies, gee I'm amazed when you say that word. Um, is that 
there's two main characteristics they look at. You've got the suicidal tendency, or you think about the suicidal thought, and you've worked out a plan to go ahead and do it. So I do have medication here. There's what you call scheduled four drugs. And what that means is you need a script from your doctor. And of course, if you run out, you can't exactly, well, you could rock up to your local emergency room and, and they'd supply you with enough until you could get to see your doctor. However, I can't say you wouldn't be treated as a, um, as a, how can I put it? Finding words hard this morning because of the pain that I'm experiencing, um, uh, addiction. So you'd be treated with someone um, who has addiction, let's say from heroin. Um, and, and you've gone into the ER and you're looking for pain meds to give you a high. And that's a stigma that unfortunately hospital staff can't help. And that's because, unfortunately, drug addicts that do continually and still do continually to go into emergency rooms and seek um, pain relief. It's not even pain relief. It's um, Schedule 4 drugs to sort of help them stop withdrawing from their addiction. And that's because, let's say, they can't buy any more oxys can't get any access to heroin or any other of those hard drugs. So in turn, they go to the ER and they hope to God that they can be prescribed. And at least then they've got another one or two days with this medication on them. That's another two days. They don't have to worry about how they're going to get them. So there is a stigma attached to people who are what you call persistent pain sufferers. And I fit into that category because I don't suffer acute pain. I've had this pain since 2015. Um, and I'll go into, and I think I have gone into why I suffer with this pain. And nursing is my main reason. And that's because I chose geriatric nursing um, just after I completed my nursing studies and Back to 1989, 1990, 1991, 92. Um, I chose geriatric care because, you know, back then it wasn't um, it wasn't something that a lot of nurses went into. So it was a career that I thought would be a good move, but unfortunately back then they didn't have you um, equipment like hoists or slide sheets and most of it was done with sheets you slid the patients on sheets or you lifted them up physically with your back well you didn't but the orderlies did which is what they were called back in those days and they're called wardies now they might still be called orderlies i don't know but gone off the beaten track so uh, it's basically where i get my injuries from and the last five years i've really suffered with that I've done really good to come off a lot of what you call opioids. Opioids are things like drugs of addiction, which they are. I can't deny that. The difference is with persistent pain a patients is, yes, they rely on these drugs to counteract the pain they suffer, but they don't generally, they're not generally addicted to their drugs. There's two characteristics of persistent pain, persistent patient, and I just can't think of them right now, but I'll get back to that one in another video, hopefully. But I just really wanted to put a, put a point out there that you know, no matter how hard you try to make sure that you get your medicines on time, even if a week earlier I had prepped to make sure that my next Webster pack would be ready and able to be picked up, which is what I did. I speak to my doctor by a conference call, not telehealth, by a conference call, three days a week. And it's not just because of my ongoing mental health, but it's also because of my ongoing pain. 
And conference call is really good because I don't have to show up to her surgery and her surgery is around about 40 kilometers away. Fortunately, she's changed from one medical center to the other and I guess doctors do that because they don't just chase the money but they chase the way management treats them. So this particular surgery now is actually owned by six other doctors so there's no there's no management as such so you know if they make decisions or got major decisions to make they make it with themselves they don't need management's approval anyway that was my main point to this morning I'm suffering big time I'm in pain I've got to wait till 11 30 to see my to have another conference call with my GP to see what the hell is going on with this script and then with every single inch of me I have to get up and my medication is due at 8.30, so 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, by 11.30, and that's only if she's running on time. I'm going to be in extreme levels of pain and showing withdrawal symptoms. And I'm feeling very sorry for myself right now. And the reason why I do have these dark glasses, and by the way, is because of all the medication I'm on, I, the um, corneal abrasions that I do have and I have had since my daughter was born because she scratched my corneas well one she did the other place was a workplace accident incident um, I'm trying to get past these pain thresholds and I will be in a lot more pain by the thing showing withdrawal symptoms so Praying it can be sorted before even 11.30, before I even have a conference call with my doctor. So I have to sign over and out for now and hopefully you will all have a great day. Um, love you all. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share my videos and I hope, I just hope that I can make this a more regular thing. So I have been so lax during COVID. Um, I've tried to keep you up to date with Bambi and show you a lot of her videos, but I haven't been too keen to get on face to face. So pray for me, folks, if your prayers out there, and if not, pray to whoever your God is. Otherwise, have a good day, take care, and I will speak to you again soon. Cheerio for now.